Hello, everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk About the Fixed Star. And today is a very, very unusual to be able to you can see my suntan. Okay, so I have a kind of a preemptive warning to keep. Well, if you look today's video, it's also pre record but if there is a little bit of sound quality problem, or if like uh, you couldn't hear what I'm talking, talking about, or suddenly I'm fed out and coming back, that's because the signal is so bad. Yes, I'm on holiday, but I'm still working. <laughs> and I have to say Chris, Christian to cope with me because I also mess up the recording time with him. Hello, Christian, how are you? <laughs> Hi Rod, I'm fine. Not at holidays, uh, not at uh, your place, no sun here in Germany, but I'm okay. Thank you. Yeah. What's the temperature there? <laughs> well, I think it's five degrees. Oh, that was the same temperature when I was in El Tate last night. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a night and not a day. Time. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, I enjoy my stargazing in the mountain sites. You know that is my kind of my what what uh, uh you know my my holy place. I have to go every every year or something. I want to go there to do stargazing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and it was so interesting because when we're talking about today's topic, I just say it is a time I can see it from here. That's right. why I'm so happy that, you know, we are co coordinate with the stars. You know, they, are, they, are, they, are, they appear in the sky. Yes. So, Chris, could you tell everyone, what are we going to talk, what star are we going to talk about today? We are talking about Alpha and Hydra. Mm, Alpha and the Hydra. So, so I think it's the same thing, the Hydra, when we watch it, you know, there's a super superhero movie, the Hydra. That organization. <laughs> yeah, in Greek mythology, it's a Hydra of Lerner. Yeah, we'll so talk about this later. Okay. Oh, okay. So you prepared. You prepared that the, 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 the story was in your in your presentation. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So Hydra is. I think that the, the first is first thing. This constellation. I think it's a very ancient, very old constellation, especially the star. Alpha uh, is very. I think. I think is is appear in the ancient historical record, right? Uh, yeah, they definitely mentioned it in uh, Mesopotamia and mm -hmm. Babylonian astrology, of course, in Greek astrology, and uh, yeah, it's quite a really really long and large constellation and alpha is the main star let me add one more thing this could be the star has the most ancient record in chinese culture that's uh, super interesting yeah so they find that you know you know that the, the ancient chinese divination way the the oracle so they 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 burn the bone and they read the read the the fracture fracture of the the bone and they make a prediction, and also according with the stars. So they write the uh, the name of alpha in the bone on the bone and that perhaps been excavated. So so we have the old is to record about these stars. So wow. I will talk about it. I will talk about it. Wow. But. Uh, before we step in, maybe we should um, listen the mythology behind and the meaning behind. And I will I will tell everyone what um, uh, what the uh, Aberdeen's uh, and the, the um, Vivian Robson talking about. And then I will bring you some story from the Eastern culture. Should we do that? Yes, sounds so, like a plan. Okay. <laughs> So do you should we should we go to your presentation or should I should I should, yeah, yeah we should, you should start with yours. Shall I start? Yes, please. Oh everything new today. <laughs> <laughs> so where is uh, share screen? So 
as I said, Alphard is a bright star in the really big, big constellation Hydra. And Hydra is also the largest constellation in the sky. And it extends from the constellation Cancer to Scorpio. And on the back of the Hydra, you can see there are two other constellation it's it's crater the cup and corpus mm -hmm. pro and in 3000 bce hydra marked the celestial equator in mesopotamia and the name of it means the solitary one and the serpent or other translation the one who stands alone in the serpent um, just because there are no other bright stars near Alphard, as you probably have seen yesterday or whenever you took, took mm. that photo. In ancient Greek mythology, uh, the constellation was, of course, associated with the Hydra of Lerna, which mm -hmm. Heracles uh, was to kill at his second task. And the Hydra was the daughter of Echidna and Typhon. So really uh, interesting parents. Yep. <laughs> and, and she killed the cattle and devastated the fields. And with flaming arrows, Heracles forced her to leave her hideout. And he smashed her heads with his club. But as soon as he had cut off one head, she knew grew uh, back. And Heracles' nephew set fire, which burned out each decaptivated neck. So no new hats could grow back. And Heracles dipped his arrows into the poisonous blood, and which then caused incurable wounds. As we all know, the serpent is a very old and multi-layered symbol, and in many myths, it is seen negatively, it's diabolical, false, lethal, malicious, poisonous, devouring, duplicitous, deceitful, and seductive. But at the same time, positive qualities are also attributed to her. So she represents the life force par excellence. And since it sheds its skin, it became the symbol of immortality and transformation, renewal, and healing. And in many cultures, snakes are associated with creation myth. For example, uh, for the Babylonians, it was Tiamat. And Marduk mm -hmm. killed her and divided her body into two parts and he placed one part in the sky and the other one on earth so on one hand Tiamat, Tiamat is on earth and on the other hand she's also in the sky and of course in the old testament you find the serpent in the garden of, garden of eden breaking up a harmonious paradisical uh, state and causing change and also in Hindu creation myth, one knows about Adi Shesha, the thousand-headed primordial being of creation, which symbolizes cosmic energy. And um, cosmologically, the serpent is the primordial ocean from which everything starts and into which everything returns. So it's the undifferentiated chaos. Um, Alfred, as a fixed star, is a complex uh, star, and it's as complex as a symbol of the serpent. Uh, I think Alfred is the eternally renewing of life energy, the power of the life spark, and the will to live of a biological species that cannot be stopped. And Alfred symbolizes the intense and instinctive nature, so uncontrolled, undomesticated, passionate, but also terrifying Kali energy. Mm -hmm. And 
Alfred possesses a creative potential and does not quest for superficial things, but rather for quality and vitality. Everything that has to do with life and death and transformation belongs to Alfred's sphere. And I think Alfred reveals bluntly what or who you really are. It stands for liberation from fear and encourages one not to shy away from one's potential, to constantly reinvent yourself, to constantly shed your skin. And Alfred urges to die the necessary death in life and to emerge out of it matured. And of course, everything has a shadow side. Alfred's shadow side shows up in emotional patterns that have not yet been integrated. And this can produce toxicity on many levels. And then Alfred can manifest behaviors that hurt the feelings of others. So this was my very brief and short thing about Alfred. And now I'm so curious what you have to say, as always, <laughs> say about the Chinese uh, mythology and astrology. Yeah. The one thing is, uh, first, I, I think it's a very interesting because, to be honest, it totally fit into what happened today before we recording. I will explain when I explain and you will feel fascinating because we know uh, this is astrology. No matter what you're talking about and then the, the speaker and the, even the audience, I usually will experience the similar energy and that happen around the their world. And this is so fascinating. And um, at the first, um, I have to say, we probably should go to the, um, as I say, the, the video represents a uh, way to, 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 to talk about Alfred, which is quite interesting. And um, the first, he was, he was this nation, they, the Ptolemy say this is the nature of uh, Saturn and uh, Venus. And they said, wow, this is interesting. And then when, you, when I read the first part, he said, it gives the wisdom, music, artistic appreciation, knowledge of a human nature. Then I was like, a, wait a minute, do I need to check my glasses? Because this is not usually Vivi Robinson. Yes. Well, because, because I haven't finished yet, because I haven't go to the next paragraph. The next one is it, the human nature, strong passion, lack of self-control, immorality and the resort that it did, and sudden death by drowning, passion, and the blah, blah, blah. Like, oh yes, okay, I'm more familiar with these. Basically, talking about Venus, so artistic appreciation, knowledge of human nature, and the music, I wish that I love it. And then the, the bring certain in, so it's kind of, a, you know, pretty interesting. And then um, I think very interesting, everything talking about it in another way. And also he say, you know, he give the Venus and the Neptunian. So come, you know, the, 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 the combination of the uh, disadvantage in most of the case. Okay. Oh, okay. Disadvantage in most of the case. And then, and then so, so it's like, uh, you know, uh, it's a, the, the poison. Uh, essentially badly. So, so he's talking about poison, talking about the bad thing happen which also quite interesting that in Chinese culture, we don't really, um, we don't really um, talking in this way. The first things I want to share is the, the, the sky bit, the sky bit, and then later I will show you a photo, okay? So yes. um, the, the first things I, uh, I want to share with you <laughs> is the, um, the sky map of the, the where I am at this moment. I know uh, Christian just like, yeah, you are in Tenerife. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, at this moment, if you are south, you are, if you are in a place south enough, like uh, at this moment, I'm in Tenerife, and uh, it's, uh, the, the, the um, latitude is about 28 degrees, then I can see the alpha rising in the sky 
just before, uh, not just before, kind of before sunrise, kind of before sunrise. And then as, as a Christian already mentioned, it is not very bright, the area, but you will notice Alfred very, very easily, very, very easily because it's a beautiful red star, beautiful red star and appear in the sky, beautiful red star. And then also the, from the area I'm uh, like a, like a south enough, you will see the, the alpha is like a, just like a jumping out of the sky is very wow. amazing. Wow. So let me show you, let me show you the, the, the Stellarians. So this is the, I think it's a four o'clock in the morning in the Tenerife. So you can see it's already coming out of the sky and it's like a coming like this up. It's, it's like, a, it's, it's like a, a, a snake or dragon coming out from the earth and uh, going to the sky. It is so beautiful. Well, I know astrologer usually like to know about the uh, zodiac degree. And I think it is the um, 27 degree, 27 degree Leo. 27 degree Leo, but it is a star in the South Hemisphere, a, a, a star in the South Hemisphere. So if you are North enough, you're probably difficult to see it easily. And uh, if you can see it, you will see the beautiful red color. I think Christian, I think we look at that star together once yes. when we were both in Taipei and yes. you say, you say you can recognize it because it's a red-ish and then there's no other star around that part of sky. Yeah, and, I remember. Yeah, then that that's why we can relate it with the kind of the the so called like a passion, you know, and uh, and the life and death is very very interesting in that in to relate it the, the red color, the red color of a hydra, the heart of a serpent. But in Chinese culture, it is very very different. The first I want to, I, I, as I already mentioned about the uh, the uh, hydra, the, the hydra, the, the alpha is has the maybe has maybe is that one of the star has the oldest record in the Chinese uh, literature or Chinese history culture, because during the uh, as excavated the the the, the oracle. Then the the um, the archaeologist read the name of those records. They say, "Oh, this is astronomy or astrology," and uh, it's part of an oracle divination. They're talking about a star called stars, stars, <laughs> and you just like, "Oh, star, star," which interesting. So there is a star called stars. Then the other stars are not stars. And also, as I say, that make me remember another um, star, a group of stars in the Babylonian time, um, Pleiades. Yes. In the, yeah, the, the name, the name, I, I, please remind me the name in the- Mul Mul. Mul Mul. So it's a star's stars. Interesting, the, the, the our first name, in the ancient Chinese, the beginning with, they call it stars. They call it stars. And uh, all another, another name is birth stars. So birth. Okay, so the, when, when they call it birth, because we have to go to the four totems in the Chinese culture, related to four parts of the sky. So the, we remember the dragon, tiger, and the tortoise. And then the last one is the birds. Then the birds re related to springtime and the south, south, south part of the sky. Interestingly, so this is a bird and this is not the heart of the bird, sorry. This is not hard. If you see the picture, it, it, it go like this, right? It's go like a line Then we call it the neck of the birds, uh -huh. the neck of the birds. It is very interesting in the Asian um, historical uh, literature. We read this, this is um, the star as a, we, as a season maker. So it marked as springtime. 
So when the astrologer look the sky after sun, sun after sunset, they will see the Hydra and the Alpha already appear in the sky. This is the springtime. Mm -hmm. So, so do you think Chinese people will explain this star with uh, life and death and this and that? No, this area is a party time for us. <laughs> Party time, yeah. Yes, yes. It is it's like a the bar hotel is in this area, <laughs> and the phones, you know, the the big big party and uh, <laughs> the the big uh the, like 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 uh, like uh, you know the lot of food, the sky kitchen in this area, and the chef is in this area, bartender is in this area. There is the flag of a pub where we say, "Come on, come to the pub, let's have a drink." <laughs> So all the Venus stuff. Indeed, yes, indeed. But this is the birds. So, so the springtime related to birds, and the, you, they can see, they can see that you know that the things grow up. So there's a lot of us, the energy of this uh, this part of the sky is talking about the growth, uh, like grow up or abundantly, and then you um it, 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 it never see it as like a or scary part of the sky. And it's very interesting when we're talking about the the uh, the marker of the springtime, and then the the birds, whole bird. In the we we believe in the beginning. In the beginning, this is the um the name of this star is a bird star, but uh, somehow it may become the whole area become birds. And then they call it the star stars. So it's stars in the birds constellation. <laughs> and uh, okay, now another meaning in Chinese, uh, the ancient Chinese court astrology. As this name is a star, it's the second mention of the of the whole birds uh, totem. So the first part is the head of a hydra. The first part is head of a hydra. We call it a willow. I, I'm not going to explain it, but well. And then this part is the, the springtime. The, you can see the willow on the riverside, and then people, people have the party time. But the part include the alpha is called a neck of the birds. The neck and the most most interpretation most interpretation is according this part of animal. The first we talking about the um the 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 the, the neck of a bird the neck of a bird because it's a passage from the mouth you eat in and the food going down through your throat through your neck. So. The things will not stay. <laughs> the things will not last long. That's the first meaning uh -huh. of the of the alpha in the Chinese culture. They will say they will say any things happen when these stars, when alpha have take a significant uh, change in the sky, either change the color, or either uh, appear in the important day, or either super bright, super shiny. Then we will make a prediction, something urgent, have strong impact, going to happen quickly and disappear quickly. So for example, maybe it's a military action or attack will come in and out very quickly. That's usually what they care about it. So it's a passage. So, but another meaning is called a passage. It shows the passage rather than uh, the thing has already outcome. Interesting, yes. Yeah, so so the alpha they have the meaning, but the third meaning is a very interesting. So as as I say, it's a short passage. Things come in and out. The, another meaning of the alpha is rush very quickly, rush into something. That's what I say. This is how I feel today, and this is how you feel today too. I'm really sorry because 
uh, as a as I as I I'm, I'm kind of in a holiday, so I I totally forget that the time we make appointment was was your time, not rather than my time. And I didn't realize until you call me say, "Oh, where is the link?" I think I see you in a bit. I say, "But we still have one hour." Oh my God! Let me quick, let me grab everything because I was, I was still in another meeting. Then I suddenly I was thinking about the Chinese view of the alphabet. They say things come in and out very quickly. I was in another meeting very quickly in and out, and then come to here and have to rush into rush into something. I just can't stop laughing um, because it's yeah. it is yeah it is so funny. Um. So this is the Chinese view of an art fraud because it's, it has the meaning of a rush into something and they come in and out quickly. And also uh, it's a neck, but also this part, think about springtime for, for us, you can see it in, after sunset in the springtime or, yeah. So it's kind of a, you know, party area of the Chinese culture. I'm going to show you the picture which I took um, I didn't took anything yesterday, it was a bit cloudy. So I'm going to show you a picture I took um, two years ago, so three years ago, uh, when I was in South Taiwan, exactly. And I say, I say, oh my God, this is so difficult to find this constellation. Yeah, let me show it. Then I have to find, find out that where's Arfat. So, it's, it's the alpha come out of the sky. So mm -hmm. I already used the line to show you where it's because it's difficult to know what star is what in this part of wow. sky. Because it's a theme. Yes, like you say, it's very dim. But alpha exactly is the brightest red one in the sky. And you can see that the, when alpha coming out, it's just like a, a snake stretch out from the earth. It's not on the, on the floor, on the horizon. It's like a vertical. Come on, I'm coming out, I'm fly high in the sky. And then usually, yes, you can see if you can see the regulars, as you, you have to be south enough to see it. So well, I mean alpha. So if you are in the kind of you know the tropical area or maybe you know nearby, you see the regulars around the uh I mean early morning in the winter or the springtime, or the springtime around the maybe after dinner, around that time, then you will see they come out from the sky. If you, as I say, if you're in South, like uh, maybe around tropical area, then you can try to find out the alpha. Because why? Because according their uh, zodiac degree, they are, you know, pretty close. But uh, this is how we, how we talking about it. Here is mm. regulars. At this moment, if you use the um, zodiac degree, is zero Virgo. But alpha is here, is 27, is 27. So in the sky, in the sky, you find one, you maybe can look around, you can find another, just a lower part of the sky and the radish star, and that's alpha, and it's beautiful. And you will think about, uh, to be honest, that was you told me about, uh, Look at that red color, and in that area, then you will think about the vitality and the passion. And that is so, so, so beautiful. Wow. Wow. So, so yes, it's interesting. We have a very different view from the yes. uh, Chinese culture to look our heart rather uh, and with uh, the Western view. And uh, you see the snake, and we see the birds. <laughs> Yeah, and all this Venus stuff without the Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. We're talking about the Venus, Venus part because it's like a food, a wine, drink, party time, you know? So, yes, we, we like, like you say, yes, we talk about the Venus part rather than we talk about uh, the, the Saturn part. So that would be very, very intriguing. Well, to, to be honest, uh, thank you to prepare this and uh, cope up with me today. And I'm really acting like an alpha, alpha in Chinese culture, rush in and out. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, well, this is our um, 
um, November's uh, episode of the Let's Talk of Big Star. And in the December time, I think our 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 recording will be out will be released around the Christmas. So I mean, me and Christian will maybe pre-record it again, and then so you can watch it during the Christmas. Well, and uh, I think that would be pretty. We wish to choose something related to Christmas it would be fun, should we? <laughs> okay, we will talk about this later. And as uh, I, I mean, I mean, I, it's so interesting to talk about this the different concept of the art in the Western culture and yes. um, and uh, with the Chinese culture is totally another meaning, another meaning, and uh, it is quite interesting. And that's how we love making this video to you know to learn from each other and to, to yeah to share the knowledge. Okay. Well, thank you for watching and uh, uh, the, let's talk about fix start today, and uh, and also thanks for Christian to you know to prepare this and to share his uh, knowledge with us. And then see you next time. Bye. See you next time. Happy Merry Christmas. Oh, that, that's next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay.